Okay, guys, 4.2 exponential functions. So exponential functions and uh, logarithmic functions, which we'll see in 4.3, they're very useful in applications. So we'll focus mostly, mostly on just the functions in 4.2 and 4.3. And then uh, after that, we'll get into a lot of the application. Okay. So the form of an exponential function is f of x equals a to the x. In this case, we call a the base and x is the exponent. Okay, and just think about anything, you know, in any type of context you've used this word in. If something's growing exponentially, generally it means very fast. Well, it can mean that it's decreasing exponentially too, which we'll also see. So what I want to do is I want to just graph a few of these basic exponential functions. Okay, so let's start with, uh, let's look at f of x equals 2 to the x. Okay, so I'm going to start with that. You can, once again, plug in your calculator. I suppose we'll do that after. And what I'll do is I'll start picking some easy values of x. I think x is e equal to zero is easy. This is two to the zero, which is one. So I know the point zero, one is on my graph. If I do one, that's two to the one is two. So I have the point one, two. If I do two, that's two squared is four, two, four. And if I were to do three, I would get nine, because two, or sorry, I would get eight because two cubed would be eight. So three would be eight would be way up here somewhere. So you can see that this thing is definitely growing exponentially very quickly, right? In fact, this is probably a little more curved like this. Okay. What happens when we go the other way? What if I use negative one? I would have two to the negative one. So one thing you got to remember is this rule right here. A to the negative N is equal to one over a to the positive n. I'm gonna use that rule right here. So this is the same as one over two. So at negative one, we get one half. And if I use negative two, I have two to the negative two, which is one over two squared or one over four. So you can see what's happening on the other end is we're going down. And no matter how big I make x, the thing to notice here is I never can get to zero. It, but it approaches zero, we remember that that means that that's a horizontal asymptote, okay? So let's make sure we put that in. Y equal to zero, that's a horizontal asymptote, and it's going up exponentially like this. You could also plug this into your calculator like so. If I do two, and then I do raised to the x, let's see what that looks like. Same sort of thing. Let me get back into a centered screen here. Uh, I'll have to fix that. But um, yeah, so you can see it is going up exponentially just like we have. Okay. Graph f of x equals three to the x. I bet something similar will happen. So if I start with zero, Three to the zero is one, anything to the zero is one. So once again, I have this point zero one. That's on both of these. One and three and two and three squared is nine. So this looks like the other one, it's just going up considerably faster. And you can attribute that to the larger base, okay? Well, what happens on the other end of things? Negative one, let's do three to the negative one is one third. Oh, so it seems like it's going down, approaching that horizontal asymptote quicker as well. One ninth at negative two. So, okay. But notice it still never gets to zero, so I still have that horizontal asymptote of y equal to zero. Now, what if we switch it up a little bit? What if we try a fraction here? F of x equals one half to the x. Okay. Well, let's see what happens with this. If I use zero, one half to the zero is not zero, it's one. Anything to the zero is one. So once again, I want you to notice that we do go through this point zero one. And that's one thing to Notice, I'm um, all kinds of colors here. Okay, whatever. If x is one, I have one half to the one, which is one half. Okay, that's there. If I use two, one half squared is one fourth. 
Well, it kind of seems like the opposite thing is happening now. Now as we go to the right, it's getting closer and closer to that horizontal asymptote that we'll never reach. Well, what happens to the left? Negative one. If I have one half to the negative one, okay, now I'm gonna use the same rule up here. This says if I take the reciprocal, I can raise it to a positive power. So same thing here, one half to the negative one is the same as two over one to the one or just two. So at negative one, I have two. Negative two, I have one half to the negative two is two to the two, which is four. So that's interesting. The exact opposite thing is happening from what happened for two to the x. So that's something to notice. It looks like maybe when the base is less than one, when it's some like proper fraction, it's almost like it goes up to the left and down to the right as opposed to what we normally expect, down to the left and up to the right. Okay. So why could that be? Okay. So once again, recall that rule. Well, it's because one half to the x is the same as one over x uh, over two to the x. If we distribute both of these, that's always gonna be one. So it's one over two to the x, which is the same as two to the negative x. Okay, so in your book, you may see it like this. You may see it like this. The key is these are the same thing, okay? Now, I wanna look at some rules that I've written down in my notes here. And you will see these in the book. Okay, so they're pretty uh, useful. And they go through the properties of exponential functions. F of x equals a to the x. Okay, so our assumptions are a is greater than zero. Okay, so that base right there, we're not going to ever have that be negative. Okay, well it could be, but then that's a little different. Okay, and then we'll apply transformations. We're going to assume a is not equal to one because if the base was equal to one, if I take one to any power, it stays one, it's just gonna stay flat the whole time. So that's why we say a is not equal to one. We're, we say that f of x equals a of the x has domain negative infinity to infinity. There's nothing you can't plug in for x. You can see that from our graphs where we go left to right and we don't have any restrictions on the x's. We also have that f of x equals a of the x is a one-to-one -one function. Okay, that's important here. It's a one-to-one -one function. It has an inverse. Look at all these. They all pass the horizontal line test, right? So all these do have inverse functions. If a is greater than one, f of x equals a of the x is increasing everywhere. That's like the first two we did. If zero is less than a is less than one, so a proper fraction, f of x equals a of the x is decreasing. It's constantly decreasing. And finally, f of x equals a of the x has y-intercept zero, one. I don't know if you remember, but every single one of these had zero, one. Well, that's because anything to the zero power is always equal to one by definition. Okay. Now, a few additional rules that I'm going to illustrate now is this, additional characteristics of f of x equals a of the x. It says that the points negative one a, one over a, zero, one, and one a are on the graph, okay? I'll show you a quick example of that in a minute. The x-axis is a horizontal asymptote, we've seen that. And the domain is negative infinity to infinity, and the range is zero to infinity. We never get a negative value out of these things, okay? So let's see how that can work. So it said that when I put in x equal to negative one, so I'm doing it for this one, that I should get out one over a, okay? So in this case, for example, a is equal to four, okay? So let's see, four to the negative one, well, that's really the same as one over four, so I have the point negative one, one-fourth. So let's see, negative one, one-fourth is about right here. Here's what I want you to notice, negative one, and that's one over a, just like our rule said. This will always be true. And if I put in zero, four to the zero, well, that's just one. So there's that zero, one point that we said is always on the graph. And finally, if I use one, then I have four to the one, which is four. So I have one, four, which is probably up here. And that's one comma a. That's all three of those points we said will always be on the graph. And then we know what this generally looks like. This will even be true in a fractional case like this. 
So if I use negative 1, so first of all, let's say what A is. A is 1 fourth. So if X is negative 1, I get 1 fourth to the negative 1, which is really 4 to the positive 1. So negative 1, 4, somewhere up here. 0, of course, that once again is going to be 1. 0, 1. And 1, 1 fourth to the 1 is 1 fourth. 1 comma 1 fourth. So it did the little switchy thing, which we did expect. But once again, it is following our rules. Negative 1, 1 over A. Well, A is 1 fourth. 1 over 1 fourth is 4. 0, 1. And finally, 1 comma A. There it is. So this will always be true for these exponential functions.